Hello everyone. Welcome to the um, second part of our uh, of our of our course. I'm calling it second part because uh, what we have what we learned in last uh, six weeks is uh, we learned several methods to uh, to analyze structure to, to analyze um, statically determinate structures, right? Uh, but many structures are not determinate because the number of constraints in those structures are more than uh, the number of equations, uh, static equilibrium equations available. So, whatever concept we have learned, those concepts cannot be directly applied to the structures which are not determinate, which are indeterminate structure. What will we do? What will we? What we are going to do uh, this week and uh, next uh, four or five weeks is we'll uh, try to understand what is statically indeterminate structure when it becomes indeterminate and if it becomes indeterminate then what are the uh, what are the methods available uh, to analyze them to find out the internal forces and uh, um, and uh, displacements okay so since this is the first lecture what we will be doing is we will understand the uh, we will understand the uh, underlying philosophy of all these methods and also review some of the basic concepts that we learned uh, in previous classes and those concepts will be useful um, for uh, subsequent classes as well. Okay. So, this week uh, we are going to start analysis of statically indeterminate structures and today what we will be doing is we will just uh, understand what is indeterminacy and um, what are the possible way out we have uh, when a structure becomes indeterminate. Okay. Okay, uh, you see, uh, you, I, I believe that you are familiar with this slide because we discussed this slide in one of our earlier, um, earlier lectures. What it is? Uh, we have an arch here which is subjected to uniformly distributed load and the support conditions at A and B are, uh, we have a hinge at A and B. And this is, uh, this is an indeterminate structure because uh, the number of uh, uh, reactions, support reactions are 4, 2 here and uh, 2 here. So, essentially we have total 4 number of uh, uh, 4 equations, uh, 4 reactions and number of equations available is 3. Now, if we apply some equilibrium equation, summation of f x is equal to 0, summation of f y is equal to 0, summation of m a is equal to 0, moment about a and finally, what we have is um, we can determine the, you see if a structure indeterminate, it does not mean that we cannot uh, find out support reactions or internal forces in any member. We can probably partially, partially uh, some of the unknowns probably we can determine, but if the structure is indeterminate then just by applying the equilibrium conditions we cannot determine all the unknowns. Okay. For instance, in this case we can determine what is the value of support, what is the support reactions in vertical direction A y is equal to Q L by 2 and B y is equal to Q L by 2 that is obvious from the symmetry. But what we have is. Uh, we cannot determine whatever information available here, we cannot determine what is the value of horizontal reaction Ax and Bx. At most, what uh, information we have that Ax has to be is equal to minus Bx, means Ax plus Bx has to be is equal to 0, right. So, if Ax and A, if whatever may be the reaction, whatever may be the value of Ax and Bx, if they satisfy this condition, then they satisfy the equilibrium condition, equilibrium equations. And and this is called this this force system is called for any force system which is we satisfy this this is statically admissible but then again we mention that uh, it is statically admissible but it is not kinematically admissible but that time we did not discuss what is kinematic admissibility uh, now we are going to discuss that so this is an indeterminate structure where the solutions are or partial solutions are QL AY is equal to QL by 2, BY is equal to QL by 2 and another condition is horizontal reactions at A and B they are equal and opposite. That is if any force system they satisfy this, this condition means they are, they are statically admissible. Now uh, suppose now this, this let us find out an equivalent system this is our actual system right. Let us find out an equivalent system. Now, here equivalent system means only the these supports are replaced by their their characteristic uh, reactions. So we know the value of Ay and value of By is QL by two. It is QL by two, QL by two, and value of only thing another thing we know that it is value of Ax and Bx are equal and opposite, but they 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 can have any values, but uh, 
as per uh, static admissibility is concerned, but they should satisfy um, uh, these conditions. So, let us horizontal reaction at A is equal to H and corresponding horizontal reaction at B is equal to minus H okay? and uh, this is statically admissible for any H reason you apply you take you apply the equilibrium condition here draw the free body it is a free body diagram you apply the equilibrium condition here we can see that this fourth system satisfies the equilibrium condition summation of f x summation of f y and summation of moments at 0. Okay? Now, let us see what is the solution of this problem. Okay? Mm, solution of this problem is uh, if we solve it, I do, we have not yet discussed how to solve indeterminate structure, but if we can solve it, probably as we understand this, yeah, some of the methods, in some of, in one of the class we will probably address this problem and try and solve um, uh, what is the value of H. But till now, uh, take it for granted that if we solve this problem for the given uh, given value, uh, given value means if we take uh, Q is equal to 1 and uh, then the then H reaction is H is equal to minus 2 5 okay, 2.5 and the deflected shape of this is shown here. So, this is the solution of the problem. How we arrived at the solution for the time being? You take the solution for granted, we will come to this point um, uh, as, we, as we proceed. Now, what, what point I want to make it? This is as I said just in the previous slide, uh, the four system are this equilibrium at in any value of h the equilibrium conditions are satisfied. Now, let us give some arbitrary value of h and then see what happens. Okay? Now, you see these are some uh, solutions that you have obtained by giving some arbitrary value of h, but uh, which satisfy that equilibrium condition. Okay? Now, here h is taken as 3 kilo Newton, in this case h is taken as minus 3, h is minus 0.5 and h is on 1. In all these cases, in all these cases equilibrium equations are satisfied, okay? in all these cases. But just by looking at the deformed shape, we can easily say they cannot be the solution of this problem. The one simple reason they cannot be solution of this problem because if you see this problem, it was hinge support. So, there should not be any uh, deflection here and there should not be any deflection. If both the deflection in both the directions are restrained and not allowed. But if you see in all these cases, uh, the beam, mm, the, the support, they deflect like this, they change their position like this. So, these solutions are not the solution. Now, it is for some value of h, you can have, you can have you can have, you can put any value of H and they satisfy the equilibrium conditions, but the deformation you get, they do not satisfy the support condition that we have in real structure, right? And we can have such infinite, so what is the, what is the point we can make here? We can have infinitely many possibilities, um, possibilities of force system which is statically admissible, which uh, satisfy the equilibrium condition. But among all these infinite force system, just only one system will one force will be one force system will be the solution uh, of this problem, uh, and that solution will satisfy these boundary conditions. These conditions. Okay. Now this is called kinematically kinematic admissibility means all these problem. If you, if you look at this slide, all these results solutions they. The four system that we have here, they are statically admissible, they satisfy the equilibrium conditions, but they are not kinematically admissible solution because they do not satisfy the kinematics that the structure, that the structure with given boundary condition and given load uh, must follow. Okay. So, then what, but at least the information that we have in this slide, we cannot, we cannot arrived at this solution. We cannot arrived at this solution. Okay, uh, we can keep on trying by uh, substituting different values of age, but we for different values of age, we'll get different kinds of um, solution, but which are not kinematically admissible. Now, so in order to find out, uh, we have static equilibrium equations. Fine, they give some information, uh, but based on that information, we cannot. Uh, find out the solution 
uniquely. We can put some value of h and get the solution, but those that we can get the deformed shape and the force system, but that will not be the solution of the real uh, structure, the structure what we have in this case. So, in addition to the equilibrium equation, we need some more condition uh, in order to find out the uh, solution uniquely. Okay. So, among all these infinite possibilities, only one case will be the solution of the system and in order to pinpoint that, in order to uniquely identify that, equilibrium conditions alone uh, are not um, enough. We need some additional condition uh, which will help us to find out the solution uniquely. Okay. Now, entire all the process that we have, all the methods uh, we have uh, to solve statically indeterminate structure, those methods are different because how these additional conditions are formed, uh, that is different in different methods. Okay. Now, uh, we have broadly two kinds of method. One is force method, one is displacement method. Okay. Now, these methods are different as I said in a sense that the additional conditions, we have equilibrium equations, but we need some additional conditions in order to find out the solution uniquely and those additional conditions, how those conditions are uh, formulated, uh, what conditions are taken in analysis based on that, we have broadly two methods. One is force method, one is displacement method. We are not going to tell you uh, right now, we are not going to discuss what is force method and what is displacement method. As we proceed, we will um, we'll understand those. But there are two methods available. One is force method, one is displacement method. Well, in this week, uh, uh, we'll introduce these methods, force and displacement methods, and then rest of some rest of the weeks, we'll uh, apply those methods in different um, in different um, different structural problems. Okay. Again, we'll consider three idealization as uh, as uh, as before, and uh, those idealizations are beam. Uh, plane frame and plane process. Okay, but before we do so, before we actually formally introduce these methods, force method and displacement methods, some of the concepts that we we need uh, throughout this uh, uh, throughout the journey, let us review them. Okay, let us understand that them. Okay, first is degree of static indeterminacy. Okay, we know what is static indeterminate, statically indeterminate structure, and uh, what is the degree of that indeterminacy? Degree of indeterminacy is the total number of unknowns. Uh, that unknowns could be external or internal. What is external and what is internal unknown? unknown? We we are we are coming coming to that point shortly. But we have a total number of unknowns, and we have certain equilibrium equations available. Some equilibrium equ equations available, are uh, independent equations uh, available. Then the static indeterminacy will be the total number of unknowns minus total number of um, independent equilibrium equations uh, available. Okay. So, uh, mm, as I said, we need some additional condition, additional equations. How many equations are required? Uh, the number of equations are required uh, equal to the um, st in the static indeterminacy of that problem. There is another kind of indeterminacy. If you remember in one class we mentioned that is called kinematic indeterminacy. We will also come to that point. What is kinematic indeterminacy, but for the timing, uh, what we re what we need is static indeterminacy. We will discuss kinematic, kinematic indeterminacy as we proceed. Okay. So, this is uh, degree of static indeterminacy. Okay. Now, let us see some example. Uh, for instance, the first example, it is a propped cantilever beam. Uh, it is very obvious we have uh, we have we have we have considered this problem many times uh, in 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 earlier classes uh, you see how many uh, how many equations are available number of equations available is 3 okay and equilibrium equations available is 3 so equation number of equation is available is 3 one is uh, summation of fx is equal to 0 summation of fy and summation of moment is equal to 0 and how many um, reactions we have we have uh, one is vertical reaction at b and then uh, then we have ay ay horizontal here we have horizontal reaction and then uh, moment and then moment so total uh, total unknown uh, unknowns are four so unknowns are four so, static indeterminacy, which is sometimes denoted as Ns, is equal to 1. 
So, in this problem the degree of static indeterminacy is 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. Let us see for this case again number of equations available is 3, number of equation available is 3 and how many um, how many unknowns we have? We have uh, here two unknowns horizontal and vertical because it is hinge support horizontal and vertical and then we have here 3 because it is um, fixed support. So, total 3 plus 2 plus uh, plus 2 total 7 unknown is 7 unknown is 7. So, in this case n s becomes 7 plus 7 minus 3 4 ok. And similarly in this case again equations available is 3 equation available is 3 and unknown um, unknown available is it is roller support. So, only vertical reaction only vertical reaction only vertical reaction in this case vertical reaction and horizontal reaction. So, total 5, total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, total 5 and then N s becomes 5 minus 2 ok. In this case uh, now equation equilibrium equations available is uh, 3, but you see we there is a hinge here, there is a hinge here ok and hinge will provide you one more condition and what is that condition at this point moment is 0. So, total equations available in this case is 4, 3 equilibrium conditions summation of f x summation of y and summation of moments are 0 from any point and additional equation is at the hinge point moment is 0. So, equation becomes 4 and uh, you a uh, number of unknown becomes 5 in this case n s becomes 1. Okay. So, for a beam we can find out for a continuous beam or any statically indeterminate we can find out what is the degree of um, static indeterminacy. Okay. Now, um, let us let us uh, see some more example uh, for, um, for frame. Now, see these these all these indeterminacy was external indeterminacy because these these are they these structures are indeterminate because of the external support system for instance if for in this problem in this problem if we remove if we remove this support then it is becomes a cantilever beam and it is statically determinate structure in this problem if we remove this support and if we remove this support then again it becomes statically determinate. If we in this problem if we remove this support and remove this again it becomes a simply supported beam statically determinate. In this case if we remove one support say one support if we remove keeping one support uh, as it is then it becomes statically de determinate. So, in all these problems see indeterminacy created due to the external uh, the external due to the reactions reactions from the support. So, this kind of indeterminacy is called external indeterminacy. Now, uh, there could be another kind of in in indeterminacy which is internal indeterminacy. Now, for consider this problem this is a frame ok two story frame. Now, this is if we see the support condition this is how many how many uh, uh, how many reactions we have. We have one reactions here a uh, one reaction and then another reaction here and then one reaction this is roller this is hinge support. So, we have three reactions and we can apply three equilibrium conditions to find out these reactions. So, these reactions can be determined. So, these reactions can be determined, but so externally this structure is determinate as long as our intention is to determine the support reactions. But now in addition to support reaction we need to find out internal forces in different members as well. If we try to do that in this case let us see suppose we have already computed the support reaction let us draw the free body diagram of A B and then this will be the free body diagram of A B at point A this is A and this is this is B. So, at point A we have support reaction A Y and A X and point B uh, this is frame. So, we have three forces uh, uh, horizontal, vertical, uh, shear force, axial force and the moment ok. Now, here we can apply three equilibrium condition uh, and determine V F M. So, we can determine that fine. Now, let us draw the free body diagram of joint of this part joint B. So, this is B and this is member B E, this is member B C and this is member B E. Now, you see here we have three unknown, here we have three unknown, here we have three unknown. So, total 9 unknowns we have. You see number of equations available in this case are 3. So, we cannot determine all these unknowns and if you if you take any other beam any other any other joint and any other beam you can see that that the determination of member force is not uh, 
possible in this case just by applying the equilibrium conditions. Whereas, as far as support reactions are concerned, we can determine the support reactions. So, this kind of indeterminacy is called internal indeterminacy. This, inde this indeterminacy is due to the fact that the number of members provided in the structure is uh, more than uh, required for the stability of the structure. So, this is uh, statically indeterminate structure, but it is internal indeterminacy. Okay? Now, uh, see the next problem. Now, for a frame, there is a, there is a rule that external indeterminacy can be external, external indeterminacy, external, external indeterminacy, indeterminacy can be computed at 3 into c, okay? where c is the number of closed loop you have in this structure. For instance, in this structure, let us go back to the previous structure. Uh, mm, okay. Let us see first the, for this, this problem. This is, this is one loop, complete loop. This is second loop. This cannot be taken as loop because these are not closed. This is open loop. So, external indeterminacy for this becomes 3 into 2. This is 6. And what is the internal indeterminacy we have? Internal, internal indeterminacy. Indeterm in, here we have two reactions. Then two reactions. These are hinge two reactions. So, total six reactions, equations available is three. So, it is internal indeterminacy is three. So, total indeterminacy, total NS is external plus internal means nine. Okay. So, uh, you can verify this for different, uh, for different uh, um, frame as well. Okay. Let us see for th next, next, next uh, another problem. For this, again apply the same concept. We have this is one closed loop, this is not closed. So, external, external indeterminacy is 3 into 1, 3. And what is internal? Again, internal indeterminacy in this case, internal becomes 3. So, total, total NS is 6. Okay. So, this is the total indeterminacy of the structure. Now, if we want to find out uh, this only the support reactions, we need only, um, if we want to completely analyze the structure, we need in addition to equilibrium equation, we need at least, we need a six additional um, conditions. Okay. Now, these are for frame. If you take, uh, if you can take any book on structural analysis, then there are different kinds of problems given, and uh, and they are uh, they are static, uh, internal and external indeterminacy are given. You can do some exercise for that. Okay, uh, uh, for truss also we can have external and internal indeterminacy. For instance, if you remember, for truss the condition was, uh, if we have number of member is m, and uh, uh, support reactions are r and joint number of joint is j then total number of total number of equations total number of unknowns are m plus r because m member forces and r reactions and total number of equations available is 2 into j because per joint you have two equations uh, summation of fx and summation of fy is equal to 0 and for a statically determinate structure this has to be equal to 1 and if it is if it is less than 2j, then the structure becomes unstable and if it is greater than 2j, then structure is statically indeterminate. But having said that, please note, uh, when we discuss about truss, we say that this is, uh, there are some examples where we can show that uh, as per this condition, the structure is, um, structure is uh, indeterminate and stable and sometimes stable and determinate, but still for some loading condition, the structure uh, becomes unstable. So, this you cannot take just as um, for granted. This is a general, this is a necessary condition, but whether a structure, stability of the structure needs to be assessed, must be assessed by visual inspection as well. Okay. Now, in this case, let us see for this problem. Uh, let us consider for the second one. Second one, you see number of joints, number of joints, will, in both the cases, number of joints is, uh, uh, number of joints are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Number of joint is 10. And uh, for second case, second case, number of member is 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 and number of support reactions are is 2 here and 2 here because both are in support uh, total 4. Now, m plus this is 21 and into 2 this becomes 20. So, this is greater than 20. So, number of unknowns are more than number of equations. So, this is statically indeterminate structure and what is n s? n s is 1 21 minus 21. Now, you see in this case what 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 causes the indeterminacy? It is the support condition. If we if we remove this hinge support and instead provide a roller support, then the structure becomes uh, determinate. So this is uh, the, the structure is indeterminate, but indeterminacy is is external indeterminacy. Now take the first one. First one again. Number of joints. Number of joints are number of joints are um, ten. Ten. And number of members in this case we have one additional member this one. So, number of members are 18 and number of supports are 2 here and 1 here. So, number of reactions are 3. So, again this becomes 21 and this into 2 become 20. So, number of unknowns are more than number of uh, equations available. It is again uh, indeterminate structure, but what causes this indeterminacy? The, the additional member, this additional member, this additional member causes the indeterminacy. If we remove this member, the structure becomes indeterminate. So, this is an indeterminate structure, but this kind of indeterminacy is internal indeterminacy. Okay? Now, well, Okay. Now, some more um, um, concept, one is uh, principle of superposition. Uh, what is principle of superposition? Um, principle of superposition is, uh, you see, we in, in one of the classes probably we discussed what is principle of superposition. Since in this all the problems that we are doing here, it is linear problem, means force and displacement relations are linear. Okay, stress strain relations are linear. So, what we can do, suppose this is the actual uh, actual structure that we need to solve, we need to find out the, we need to analyze, find out the support reaction. Suppose in this case the displacement at, at point C we need to find out for this force system. What we can do is we can break the structure into several small, small part. First instance, suppose this is the structure and this structure, same structure, but only consider, only consider load P1. And the second case consider the same structure, but only consider the distributed load. And say third case same structure, but only consider the P3 case. Now, suppose in this case it is delta 1, delta 2 and this is delta 3. So, delta 1 is the displacement at the same point causes by P1, delta 2 is the displacement at the same point causes by uh, Q and delta 3 is the displacement at the same point causes by P3. Then we can say that the actual this, this structure is this. So, total delta, delta for this structure can be obtained as delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3. This is called principle of superposition means we have, we have, uh, we, we obtain the solution for small, small part and then superimpose those solution to get the actual solution and it is a very, very, uh, very, very um, effective way because uh, again, in, in advanced structural analysis uh, or, or, or in different method of analysis, we will see that this is, a way, this is the underlying philosophy of most of the method that you have a structure uh, needs to be analyzed or you have a problem that needs to be analyzed, divide the problem into small, small sub problems and then assemble them together. And how you assemble them that depends on whether the problem is linear or non-linear. But in this case, since we are in the, li we are, uh, the linearity is one of the important assumption. So, we can just add them to get the final uh, deflection at this point and that is true for bending moment, shear force, support reactions, any internal forces. Okay? So, this method, this is called principle of superposition. We will be using frequently this principle, concept of principle superposition. And another important concept is compatibility. What compatibility says, just to demonstrate, take suppose this is a simply supported beam subjected to, not simply supported, it is a continuous beam, indeterminate beam. Uh, subjected to some loading system and this blue line that you can see that is the deflected shape of this beam. Now, if we draw a slope at B, then suppose this slope is theta B A and this slope is theta B C. Okay? What compatibility says that this theta B A has to be equal to 
uh, theta b theta b a this is one condition and the second condition is at b since it is supported at the hinge supported at b the deflection at b should be equal to 0. So, delta b should be equal to 0 and this angle and this angle this slope slope obtained from this segment and slope obtained from this segment at the same point has to be same ok. Just to uh, one more example suppose this is another example and this blue line that you can see that is the deflected shape ok. And uh, at this joint B we have three members member A B B C and B D. Now, suppose theta B C is the slope at B, but obtained from segment B C similarly B A is from B A and B theta B D is from B D. What compatibility condition says that because, because this is uh, this is a rigid joint this is a rigid joint and initially it was 90 degree. So, it remains 90 degree there will be no rotation at this joint. Uh, so, these angles are 90 these angles are 90 degree these angles are these angles are 90 degree ok these angles are all 90 degree. So, it says that this this angle this angle and this angle uh, should be uh, same ok. And you have we have used compatibility condition earlier also, but probably without referring to the term compatibility. For instance, if you remember, we 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 solve this problem, right? And we have a simply supported beam, simply supported beam, which is subjected to a concentrated load P. Okay, and this is A, this is B, and this is this is C. And if we if we want to solve it this is p. If we want to solve it by, by direct integration method and the direct integration equations that we had was uh, d 2 y d 2 y d x 2 is equal to minus m by e i right. So, but what is the bending moment diagram for this beam? The bending moment diagram for this beam is like this like this ok. So, bending moment in in part a b and in part b c they are different. So, we need to apply these apply this uh, we need to integrate this uh, uh, integrate this equation over b over a b and over b c separately. Now, for each case we will get two constant because the second order equation. So, for a b we get two constant c 1 and c 2 c 1 c 1 and c 2 and for b c also we get three or two constants c 3 and c 4. What are the conditions we have to determine those con con constant boundary conditions we have that at A is equal to deflection is equal to 0 at C is equal to deflection is equal to 0, but that will give us two constant, but other two constant we need two equations and what what are those two conditions if you remember we use that slope at B is equal to 0 and deflection slope at B is equal to slope is continuous at B and deflection is continuous at B means uh, slope obtained from A B at B should be equal to slope obtained from BC at B. Similarly, deflection at B obtained from AB and deflection from deflection at B obtained from BC should be uh, same. This was compatibility equation. Okay, and this 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 figure and this figure exactly tells you that. So we have used compatibility equation even in uh, even while solving statically uh, determinate structure. Okay. So, compatibility equation is another thing that will be used very frequently uh, uh, while studying uh, indeterminate structure. Okay. So, what we do is stop here today. Next class, uh, as I said, uh, there are two kinds of method. One is broadly, one is force based force method, one is displacement method. What we do next lecture is we will just introduce the force method. Okay. Okay, thank you. See you next class.